Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistle Kick Martial Arts Video. My name is Jeremy, and I'm in the car. That's right, this is a video episode. I'll throw these out once in a while. And honestly, I just feel like mixing it up. And that is the topic of today's show mixing it up. We'll come back to that in a moment. Of course, if you want to see the video, you can head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash whistlekick. And if you want to find the show notes, you can find those at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Don't forget, use the code PODCAST15, PODCAST15, at whistlekick.com, and save 15% off everything we got over there. Everything. All of it. The whole shebang. Even stuff that's new, stuff that's on clearance. doesn't matter. It's 15% off. All right. So mixing it up. In fact, let's put a twist on that and call it making it fun. I had a great Taekwondo class last night. And as I thought back, why was that, I almost said episode, why was that class so much fun? It was fun because it was different. And it was different because it was fun. Now, don't get me wrong. I love martial arts. I love classes in all the places I train. But I think we can all agree some classes are more fun than others. And to me, what makes a class fun is that it's different, but also it's the, the atmosphere. So let me tell you about last night and why this class was more fun. It was a pretty standard class. In fact, it started out as a fairly hard class with some conditioning and some combinations and some basics and, and things like that. And then we ended up with some partner drills. And those partner drills involved kicking paddles and started with some difficult kick combinations and then turned into some even more difficult kicking techniques, including jumping over things. We started by jumping over some kicking shields and kicking the paddles, which turned into jumping over a chair which turned into jumping over two chairs, some of us. And people had a blast. Even the people that weren't able to participate at that highest level still had a lot of fun. The instructor had fun, I had fun. As far as I could tell, all the other students had fun, regardless of their ability to achieve at that high level. Because we were trying things. We were de doing things that were new and different things that most people hadn't done before. I don't know that anybody there had jumped over two chairs. But it worked. What worked about it? People were engaged. They were fired up. They were supporting each other. They were smiling. And here's the thing about having fun and smiling. If you've ever worked with children, you know this. If nobody's having fun, they're not learning. The best way to open someone up and get them ready to learn is to entertain them, to put them in a place where they're enjoying what they're doing. And that was the secret for last night's class. It wasn't a secret, but that was the, the difference, is that the instructor kind of let go of the reins, let us do, I don't want to say what we wanted, but here's the thing, it was only the last 10 minutes of class, the 90 minute class. And I will promise you, every single person walked out of that class feeling great, smiling, happy, and they will look back on that class as a great class. If you're an instructor, you probably know the most important parts of a class are the beginning and the end. You open the class well, you close the class well, make sure people are going out on a high note you're more likely to get them to come back. They're more likely to show up ready to train, ready to engage. And you're more likely to have fun through that entire process. You've probably been in classes where people don't seem to be having fun. Nobody wants to be there. That doesn't do anything for anyone's education, but it also doesn't do anything for their personal development or for the student enrollment. If you want more people to show up to something, it's gotta be fun. And if that's the priority, the rest of the stuff can happen. Doesn't matter how good your curriculum is, doesn't matter how 
good of an instructor you are in teaching technical things, if you can't make it fun, nobody's going to learn. And I think this might be part of the whole McDojo thing. That was episode, was that 359? Talked about McDojos, got some support, got some hate for it. That's okay. But when I look at those schools that a lot of people would term as McDojos, they tend to have a lot of fun. The schools that are so tied to their tradition that they won't consider that things can be fun, and they drill, 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 and they're making it difficult and hard, and the way that they determine the quality of a class is by how sore or tired or bruised or even bloody they are. There don't tend to be as many people at those classes. So here's what I think. I think you've got to mix it up in your own training, in the training you do with others, in life. I've got this saying that when you do something, you should make it 15% different than what you've done before. And if you do that, you're constantly iterating. You're constantly making things better, but you're not taking so much risk that if everything you try goes south, that you'll ruin what you're doing. If you take something that's tried and true, keep it 85% the same, make 15% of it different, you'll probably still hit a 90, maybe even a 95% uh, on some kind of subjective scale. And then, later, you take the stuff that worked, you incorporate that, and you try another 15%. And then over time, the quality of what you're doing is through the roof. And when all else fails, if your lesson plan's going out the window, if you've got chaotic children in the class, heck, if your family's going nuts, find something that's fun. Bring it back to that foundation and everything else can stem from that. So that's it. That's what I got. Don't forget, podcast 15 at whistlekick.com. 15% off everything. Whistlekickmartialartsradio.com for the show notes, including the audio version of this, uh, link to the YouTube version, transcript. What else we got over there? A whole bunch of other episodes. And if you want to follow us on social media, we are Whistlekick, at Whistlekick on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. If you want to email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Keep it easy. Thank you for your time today. Thanks for listening or watching, whatever the case may be. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.